Let's bring in former MSNBC host Chris Matthews. Chris. And I'll let you launch it to Chris, but I yeah. will say this case, I don't think we can underestimate how much this case is a very bad deal for Donald Trump compared to the others where he might have highfalutin ideas that he can get around things. Don't think he will, my, my analysis. But this case hits at the heart of everything he's about, his money, right. his fortune, the size of things. Well, we've always said it always goes back to, to money with Donald Trump. And so this does hit him right at the heart of, yeah. of, of, of what he values the most. And it's far more immediate in some of these criminal cases. You know, Chris, it's fascinating. Uh, for years, we have said on this show and other people have talked about how in America, no man is supposed to be above the law, and yet Donald Trump is always above the law. And we said that from 2016 through, well, most of 2022. And yet here we are, as uh, the Attorney General of New York State just said, uh, no man is above the law. Every, uh, laws apply to everybody. And here we find... After all these years of Donald Trump going back to the mid-70s, skirting the law, everything seems to be converging all at once. He could lose his businesses over tax fraud and, 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 and business fraud, and he could lose his, his freedom over stealing nuclear secrets and trying to rig an election. It's all coming to—the bill is all coming due at one time, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, I've been watching the program all morning, and I have to tell you, you hit a lot of big points about character. I mean, the character of a president should be important. And the idea that you can bully people out of never paying your bills, so many people tell you that they owe, that Trump owes the money, and they could never get him to pay because he would take you to court and just outspend you with lawyers. And he would do that. Uh, you pointed out this morning about what he, he said about Paul Pelosi. I mean, does anyone any doubt about the character of a person who, who would make a charge like that this weekend, making fun of a guy who was, through his own fault, is a victim of street crime, really, which the Republicans are very angry about street crime and, and this kind of a criminal behavior, of the, of the most simple kind, assault. And yet, uh, you know, does anybody doubt that he was sitting in the, in the White House during the attack on the Capitol on January 6th of 2021? He was sitting there doing nothing, fiddling his thumbs, and watching this horror go on because his character told him, this is fun. These people are getting well, hurt. Well, and, and, the vice president is going to get testimony, attacked. Hey, hey, Chris, the testimony on January 6th and people who worked for him is not only did he sit there and watch, but he would rewind to watch the most violent parts yes. giddily. It's like what he said about John McCain that the president reiterated this week, this past week in Vietnam. I mean, they said that John McCain was somehow a guy who threw his hands up because the, the other side was coming. He was shot down over Hanoi, the enemy capital. He was shot down and beat, beaten up by the people that caught him. And even now, the Vietnamese look up to him as a person of courage. And Trump doesn't. And he looks upon Paul Pelosi as some sort of, what, collateral damage or because there's homelessness in San Francisco? I mean, the rules of engagement are gone. This guy trusts nobody. He, he, he isn't to be trusted. And, and on this crime in New York, the one thing I think the average Joe, excuse the expression, in, New York, in Philadelphia or around the state of Pennsylvania or the whole Rust Belt, the average person who makes an average income looked up to Trump as some rich guy. Hey, even this rich guy with, is with us, this New Yorker, this Manhattanite, he agrees with us. They've been using his wealth as a demonstration of their own honesty. And now he's not gonna be shown to be so wealthy. I mean, he's wealthy enough, certainly, but this, this trial, if it goes on for three months, is really gonna dismember the guy. It's important to remember yeah. that the tax returns over the, the decade when he was selling art of the deal and, and painting himself as one of the richest uh, and most successful people in the world, the IRS, uh, you look through those IRS uh, returns over a decade, and he lost more money than any other single taxpayer in the United States of America. So, so much for that great prowess. I want to I want to play that clip, that Pelosi clip, the Paul Pelosi clip. And of course, uh, we, we know how grotesque it is that Donald Trump laughs and mocks and makes jokes of an 82-year-old man uh, who is, is beaten up uh, and oh assaulted God. with a hammer. Uh, worse than that, though, listen to the audience. Listen to them laughing along, uh. laughing at attempted murder. Together we will take on the ultra-left-wing liars, losers, creeps, perverts, and freaks who are devouring the future of this state like a swarm of locusts.
and we'll stand up to crazy Nancy Pelosi, who ruined San Francisco. How's her husband doing, by the way? Anybody know? And she's against building a wall at our border, even though she has a wall around her house, which obviously didn't do a very good job. I mean, it's just laughing, cruel, sick. But then the audience, you know, it's like, Chris, <clears throat> the rules don't apply to this man. And they have all made that decision together. And I want to ask you about that. But I, I, I want to broaden it out to the area where the rules do apply. And that would be in the court of law. And so in the court of law, there is a little bit of something for everyone that will be playing out over the next year as he runs for president, trying to steal an election. He's, of course, got counts against uh. him for that. He also says he won the election, so he's still trying to steal it. Um, he admits to stealing documents. He says they were his. So this is the part that he admits, but he's being charged with it. He admits to having sex with a porn star and then paying her off. Doesn't see a problem with that. There's January 6th. You can make your own mind up about that. Defamation in that trial. He was liable for sexual abuse. The judge said it was rape. And now this. This case in New York City. This judge saying that he is liable for massively ripping people off for years. For years. That he was a shyster and a grifter and a ripoff artist long before he became president. I think as the evidence comes out in this one, it will cut to the core of the middle class American just trying to play, pay the bills, runs a business, plays by the rules, pays his or her taxes, seeing what a con artist this guy is. You know, Mika, and that's uh, the nature of his business. It seems more and more that you learn about his wealth and how it, it comes from not paying your lawyers, not even paying Rudy. God, he has a fundraiser for Rudy. He wouldn't even pay the bills himself. He owes the money, not the fundraisers, the donors. He wouldn't pay his bills. People not saying for years he hasn't paid bills for, for the subcontractors and people that work, people the outloads uh, jobs to, not paying any bills. And that's how he made his money. Uh, the people who look up to him look up to that gold tower. They look at his beautiful wife. They look at how he lives. He has a house uh, down in Mar-a-Lago, mm -hmm. and they figure this is the big shot, the big shot of a, a Superman right. cartoon. Uh, he's the big shot yeah. da downtown developer that you see in these old comic books. And yeah, he's the guy. He's the guy that looked up to nine years as the apprentice, being the boss, the guy who fires people. And then, of course, he comes along and talks about women, and he says there needs to be some form of punishment. There needs to be some form of punishment for Donald Trump. I mean, that's what it's coming to. He's, he's facing a civil trial where he's going to be basically, t t everything's going to be taken away from him in terms of his image. And maybe the image will have some effect. But I'll tell you what Joe has said this morning. I tell mm -hmm. you, I, the, the audience laughing at a guy getting his head bashed in because he happens to be the spouse of, a, of an opposition political leader, uh, Nancy Pelosi, who is a very good person, by the way, and so is her husband. Yeah. And the idea that somehow all fair in the game, and we can laugh at that. But isn't this the, the party, the Republican Party, that's against street crime in places like Philly? And they should be against crime. This is crime. You're looking at yeah. it. Yeah, Many different yeah, ways. Yeah, you know, uh, you, you just wonder. Uh, you, you just wonder what led these people to where they are right now, where they would laugh and applaud at an 82-year-old man getting his brains bashed in. And, you know, we're supposed to sit here and go, oh, we want to go. And we want to discover what makes a Trump supporter. Hey, I do. Some of these people call I themselves do. Christians. I, I, I have seen, oh, my God. So many of them do. It's a Christian nationalism, the Lauren Boebert Christian nationalism, where she says if Jesus had an AR-15, they wouldn't have been able to crucify him. I mean, this is it, it's it's just absolutely grotesque. But but the saddest part is that these people willingly are cheering and laughing at their political opponent's spouse, getting his brains bashed down. That's where they are. That's not where we are as a country in 2023. So let's just, that's not where the Republican Party is as a country in 2023. But that certainly is where Donald Trump and his supporters are in 2023. And it is a blight. It is a blight They've on American democracy. It is a blight on our country. Now, this, this weekend. Let's go to Garrett Hayes.